Hello guys, welcome to IC Shades and welcome to the fourth lecture of our 2D Arena game course. In this one, we will make the player move and we will do that using the new input system. Let's dive in! We are in our project and first of all, we need to install the new input system. So we will click window here and then packet manager and then in this list, we will search for input. See right here, input system, click on it and then click install right here. After the installation, we will get this warning and we will click yes to use the new input system. In order to add the input from the player to our game in the new input system, we will have to make a few steps. So the first one is here in the assets, we will right click and we will create input actions all the way down here. We will name it player, sorry, player, and then we will double click it and a new window will appear. We see here action maps and we will click on the plus and that will add an action map and we will name it player controls, player controls, okay. And now we have to add the actual action. So we have here action, if we click on the little arrow, um, it has an action already, but we will delete this, delete, sorry, right click and delete and go to action and we have some things here on the right. We have the action type, click here, we won't need a button, we will need a value because uh, we have um, actually four buttons up, down, right and left. And now the control type, we will click here and click on vector 2 because we have two axes, up, down and right left so click on vector 2 and now with these guys selected we can click here on the plus to add um, to add an action with these properties so now click on add 2d vector composite because again we have four buttons and two axes click here and now we can click on each of them up down left right we will start of course with up and you will see here binding. You will have to click here on path and you can search for, um, for the button you want uh, to press or you can click here on listen and then press the button. So I clicked on listen and now I press W and the W from keyboard appeared right here. Do the same for down, S, S keyboard, the same for left, a and the same for right B good now I have a small challenge for you I want you to add a new action that will do exactly the same thing move up down right and left but now you will instead of uh, WASD you will put um, the arrows up down left and right if you have done that very well Otherwise, we will do it together. So click on new action. In the properties, we already have value and vector. Click on plus again. Add to the vector composite. And now for up, we will go to path, listen to. I'm pressing the arrow up, up arrow, down, listen down arrow, left, um, listen left, and right, listen right. And do not forget to save the asset here. Now close this one. So the first step is done. Now we will go into the scripts and in our player script and delete everything we just wrote um, in the other video because we just did it so you can learn about methods and classes and so on and so forth. You can also delete the note because we won't need it. And now we have to declare a variable of type vector2 in which we will store the vector2 input uh, from the input actions. So the vector2 is a variable that will store mm, a position with uh, x and y uh, coordinates and think of, think of it as a, I don't know, double float, x and y. So we will declare vector2, vector2, and we will call it movement. Now we have to make a method or a, fun or a function uh, and this function will extract the, 
uh, input that the player gives unity into our script so it, it extracts a vector a vector variable so we will if you remember we will make it public we will make it void so it won't return anything and we will name it let's say movement and now in our parentheses we will have to write like this callback context and we will name it move okay so we don't have this callback context because it uh, belongs to another namespace if we write something and we haven't declared the namespace we can make a little shortcut we will right click here on callback context and then click on quick actions and refactoring and then it suggests here using unity using static unity engine dot input systems dot input action so we will click on this and now the namespace is added using static unity engine dot input system dot input action so let's move on with our method we have a small error here we can't have a vector to name movement and the method name movement so we will change the method to movement with capital M okay so now in our method in uh, our variable movement we will store the um, uh, the input from the player so we will write movement our uh, variable equals to a new vector 2 so we need a new vector 2 so uh, when you write the vector 2 you must write the coordinates into in the parentheses you must write the x and the y so we will get the x from our variable move that stores the information from the input so we will write move dot read value because we want to read the value and make these signs and write between them a vector two and as i said we have to write the x coordinate and then the y coordinate so write um opening close parentheses because the read value vector 2 is a um, method and then dot x next we will write the same move dot read value vector 2 and then close parentheses dot y semicolon at the end so that's our function now we have to pair our function with the input player so how do we do that we will go into unity we will double click the player input actions again and we will rename new action here we will right click and rename it to movement okay and then save again now we we click on our player here in the hierarchy and we see the inspector and we click on add component and we write player and we go to player input and now we have some more information here and we have a spot for actions we will drag our input action so the, this player we will drag it here and now we will click on behavior and we will change it from send message to invoke unity events because the action in our script will be an event you will see so now you can click on the small arrow here to open the events and now again, again click on a small arrow to open player controls this is the name that we have given our uh, input and now we can see here movement because we renamed we just renamed it to movement click on this plus and now we have here an object so in this object we will um, drag our player so our player game object so from the hierarchy grab the player and drag it here now go to here where you see no function click and we have to uh, if we have to choose a function and we just made the function so go to player because these are components of our game object we have the game object the transform the sprite renderer and so on and so forth so go to the player and you will search for actually it's not here why it is not here because we just forgot to save our uh, our script so go into the script and then control s 
Now go back to Unity, wait for it to save, to, to load, and then, come on, slow computer, right? We will talk about slow and fast computer in a bit. Good. Now go to no, oh, go to no function and in the player, now we will find movement here, dynamic callback context, movement. Now our um, our method is paired with the player, but we still have uh, some steps to go. We will go into our script. So what have we done till now? We have put, we have stored in this variable, in variable movement, the input that the player gives uh, the game when uh, he presses WASD or the arrows. Now we must go even further and use that information uh, to actually move the player. In order to do that, we must give Unity the information about uh, the player movement from our script. But we can't just give it one time, we must give it continuously. So we can use void update uh, because we know uh, the operations in update are um, called once every frame. But we have a small problem. Let's say we have a small computer and a fast computer. The small one will run 10 frames per second, let's say, and the fast one will run 100 frames per second. So 10 operations per second and 100 operations per second. And we don't want that because we want our game to be, be played the same on a slow and a fast computer. So we will use another method uh, also derived from mono behavior and that method is called fixed update. So we will write void. We can write fi and then uh, Microsoft Visual Studio will suggest um, functions and we have here fixed update and that's what we are looking for and we can just press tab and the fun function is already written. So in the fixed update the operations are called 50 times per second, that is by default. And how do I know that? Let's jump back into Unity. Go here to Edit and Project Settings and here Time, you can see Time. And Fixed Time Step 0 0.02. So that means that operations in Fixed Update are called once every 0 0.02 seconds. That means 50 times per second. We can manipulate it and go 0 0.01 and that means 100 times per, se per second and so on and so forth. I will close this and go back to the script. So what do we write in the fixed update? We have a lot of methods to move an object or a player, but uh, a lot of them have some issues. Uh, we have a method that teleports an object from a place to another, but that will uh, uh, give us problems with interactions with other objects. Uh, we can add force to our player, but that means that we push it. And if we push something uh, without that something having friction with the floor that he is moving on, then he will slide like on an ice. So we won't want that because then we will have to uh, manipulate our friction and so on and so forth. We will use a method called move position and that moves the position of our body but our player doesn't have a body so we must give it a body so how do we do that we will go to unity and we want we must add another component to it so click in the hierarchy on our player add component and write rigid and you see here rigid body 2d click on that so this gives our player um, a body with mass with gravity and let's see what happens if we click play the first time we click play in our game. We click play, wait a few seconds for it to load. And our player is falling. Why does our player, why does our player fall? So our player falls because it uh, interacts with gravity. It has mass, so of course he will fall. And in our 2D game, because it's top down, we won't uh, need gravity. So we will go here in our rigid body, you will see gravity scale and put gravity scale to zero. Just that, click on play again and now our player won't move from his position. So we have a body, let's move it. Go into the script. First of all, we have to get the rigid body component. So we will write get component, let's use that, 
um, open and close this greater and lesser than and here we will have to write rigid body 2d because it is 2d open and close parentheses because it is a function dot and we said we will move position so move position and now we will have to write in the parentheses what we want to move or what we want to change so we will have the position of our rigid body and we will have to write again get component open this rigid body 2d open and close parentheses dot position because our rigid body has position and we have to add to that position our movement semicolon do not forget to save Control s back into unity click the play button wait for it to be blue and now the moment of truth click on a press on a it moves a little faster why does it move that fast so it moved that fast because it moves one unity unit per fixed update and that means one unity unit per 0 0.02 seconds so it moves 50 unity units per second and we want it to be a little slower okay so we will jump back into unity into our script sorry and now we will create another uh, variable a float variable and we will call it speed semicolon and uh, we can we can make it serialized because we want to manipulate it from our from unity from our inspector and let's say serialize field okay and now we can manipulate it from our uh, uh, from the inspector and we will also make it equal to let's say 0 0.02 because we want uh, f don't forget the f because we want our player to move one unity unit um, per second so we must uh, multiply our initial movement and that movement uh, will give uh, will give us a speed of 50 unity units per second and we will multiply it by 0 0.02 and that will give one uh, unity unit per second so we will go here we must open and close parentheses here and we will multiply movement by this speed okay now save control s go back into unity and let's see what we have done Pl press play wait a second or two and now we can move but now it moves very 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 slowly so what we can do we can now manipulate the speed from our instructor from our inspector so click on player and in the inspector here when you see player you see the speed so let's make the speed um let's say 0 0.1 five times faster that than you uh, that it was earlier so click play and let's see how it moves i think it moves uh, fairly decent with a fairly speed okay i have a challenge now uh, it is more of a question click play and see what is wrong with this scene I will click play as well and we will see that if we move our player we can go through the walls and we can go outside of our camera so let's fix that we will add another component to our player and as well we will add it to our um, walls so click on the player in hierarchy go here in the inspector add component and search for collider and we have box collider capsule collider circle collider and so on and so forth we must choose a 2d one and we will go with circle collider for our player and now you can see uh, around our player uh, just press control and move in a little closer you can see a circle a green circle and that means this is our collider so when our uh, player interacts with something this will be the limit so we will do the same to our walls go here to wall this is the bottom one add component this time we will go with uh, box collider 2d you see the green 
um, square right now and if you press in the inspector in the box collider if you press this button where you see edit collider you can press it and now you can edit the collider so um, pressing the control expand our collider and we will do the same to all four walls so top wall add component box collider edit expand it it doesn't matter if the collider uh, expands more than the wall the other one add component box collider edit expand it this time up and down and do the same thing for the right wall add component box collider edit and expand okay we can save here click on high hierarchy and control L. if you see the same we have a little a small asterisk here control x s and it goes away and now click play and we will see that our player can't move past the walls up down and right and left nice So we have the questions. Where can we write the code that moves our player? Think of the why as well. If you said update or fixed, then you are correct. In the start method, we only call once the operations. And if we make a method, our if we make our own method, that method it isn't called only if we put it in the update or in the fixed update. In the update, if we remember we have that small problem with slow and fast devices but you can write uh, the code that moves the player there too next how many times does the operations in fixed update are called per second 100 50 depends on how many frames our device runs the game depends on uh, the fixed time step that you set in unity so think about that and if you said depends on the fixed time step that you set in unity then you are correct so our fixed update is called once every 0 0.02 second default we can manipulate that and go to 0 0.01 we can go to one per second if we want so if it is 0 0.01 then 100 would have been the answer but we can manipulate it 0 0.02 50 and depends on the frames uh, that would be if we write something in the update so if you manage to choose to answer correct both questions, good job. Again, if you didn't, you can revisit the lecture. That's it for this one. We have moved our player. We can do right, left, up and down. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe and share the channel with your friends and stay frosty and extra spicy.